This video is brought to you by HubSpot. Today, we're diving into a hot topic that's been on everybody's mind lately, AI and its impact on tech jobs. Buckle up because I've got a take on this that you won't expect, and it's kind of wild. Let's start by addressing the elephant in the room, the fear that AI is coming for software development jobs. And honestly, I get it. Have you seen the demos for products like Copilot or Cursor? They're not just impressive, they're borderline mind-blowing. These AI coding assistants can generate code quickly, sometimes generating entire products in front of your eyes. They debug complex code, and they explain algorithms in plain English. It's like having a super smart coding buddy who never sleeps, never gets tired, and puts up with you despite the abuse you levy on it and your emotional baggage. When you see these tools in action, it's easy to imagine a future where human developers are obsolete. But here's the thing. Despite these flashy demos and genuine technological advancements, the reality is a bit underwhelming. LLMs can't learn skills that they weren't trained on. They're impressive, but they're limited in what their training data is. You can't train them on short stories and have them create good poetry. It's unclear that we'll have the training data for everything that humans are good at. Studies show that coding is only 15% of a developer's day. The rest involve tasks with fuzzy inputs and outputs that AI struggles with. Recent research shows that while AI tools do increase productivity, it's mainly in the form of more pull requests. That's quantity, not quality. But quality is also bad. Code written with AI assistants like Copilot actually increases bugs by 41%, according to a study by Uplevel. So while you're writing code faster, you might be spending more time debugging. And think about this. If you thought copying and pasting code was risky, imagine having an LLM write entire functions or systems that you don't fully understand. When something breaks, and it will, look at the recent CrowdStrike outage, guess who has to fix it? You're not being clever if you say another LLM. It's going to be a competent software engineer that ends up doing it. LLMs are amazing for creating boilerplate code and for junior developers who don't know up from down. It will make developing software faster, and it will increase the expectation of what makes a good developer. But the biggest reason dev jobs are safe is that the development backlog is like the horizon. When you get to where the horizon was, guess what? it's moved. As we build and deliver more, there's always more to do. I worked at Amazon for nearly 20 years, the last five years as a principal software engineer. I have never been on a team where the backlog didn't stretch towards the horizon. No software product is ever done. Like, done done. Do you think Instagram is in its final form, close to it, or that a final form even exists? That Amazon will ever be complete? That once we have AI coders that will never need an app developer again because there's no app that it can't just make for you immediately? That's absurd. Get out of here with that garbage. When it comes to AI, you will have to think about two types of work. Finite work and infinite work. Software development? That's infinite work. There's always something new to build, improve, or fix. When it gets to the horizon, there's just that much more to do. So while AI tools might make developers 50%, 80%, even 99% more efficient, that just means they'll ship more products and features. More efficiency equals more work, not fewer jobs. It's like giving a writer a better typewriter. They'll write more books, not stop writing altogether. Give them a word processor and they'll do it even faster. Give them voice dictation and they'll do it even faster. Give them an LLM and they'll be really fast, but they can't replace people in fields with infinite work unless you think that the perfect book exists and can be written. Now, before we dive into the next point, I'd like to thank today's video sponsor, HubSpot. I've teamed up with HubSpot to provide you an incredible set of five templates to help you use ChatGPT in your workplace effectively. Now, these aren't meant to replace you, they're designed to make you more efficient. Here's what you'll get in this bundle, a ChatGPT decision flowchart. Ever wonder when it's appropriate to use ChatGPT? This flowchart will help you make informed decisions about when to leverage AI and when to skip it. A template for setting clear guidelines in ChatGPT, because let's face it, AI needs some boundaries and there's an art to prompting. An AI-generated content refinement checklist. Remember how we talked about how AI-generated code needed human review? 
This checklist will help you elevate that AI-generated content to human-worthy standards. An AI adoption checklist, a step-by-step -step guide to integrating AI into your workflow, because really, that's where AI is gonna help us out the most, by integrating into existing workflows, and a guide to using ChatGPT at work with more than 100 prompts to try. It's an ebook packed with insight, tips, and tricks. Coming up with effective prompts is the biggest time suck when it comes to AI, so why not get a ton of prompts that are known to work? To get this free bundle and start leveling up your AI game, check out the link in the description. Who knows? You might become so efficient that you'll have time to start your own company. Thanks again to HubSpot for sponsoring today's video and for providing these templates free of charge to my viewers. So let's talk about finite work and infinite work. I'll define infinite work as any endeavor where you're building or creating. AI will help us make more and better movies. Writers write better books. Coders write better computer programs, probably. And entrepreneurs run better businesses, at least as long as capitalism is a thing. There's no such thing as the last book, the last computer program, the last business or product. So what is finite work? Anything where you're managing a finite resource. Driverless cars are managing a trip. I envision a future where the concept of driving is purely optional, whether that's in five years or 50. The job of a driver will be replaced by a fleet manager, whose job it will be to make sure that the AI automation hasn't gone off the rails and to make decisions impacting the entire fleet. This person is gonna get more and more efficient. Today, a fleet manager can manage dozens or maybe even hundreds of cars. With AI's assistance, they may be able to manage thousands or tens of thousands of cars. But because the number of vehicles in the world is finite, you can imagine a future where humans are completely taken out of the loop when it comes to driving. Amazon just released a bombshell where they're ordering everybody back to the office five days a week. I just quit my job recently to make content full time. Sounds like I got out just in time. But hidden in the message about the return to the office was that Amazon is going to decrease the number of managers by 15% by the end of Q1 of 2025. As Andy Jassy, CEO of Amazon puts it, having fewer managers will remove layers and flatten organizations more than they are today. If we do this work well, it will increase our teammates' ability to move fast, clarify and invigorate their sense of ownership, drive decision-making closer to the front lines where it most impacts customers and the business, decrease bureaucracy, and strengthen our organization's ability to make customers' lives better and easier every day. Let's think about what managers at companies like Amazon do. They evaluate the performance of people that report into them. They hire and have to fire people. They monitor their team's performance, report status upward, and communicate messages downward. They align teams, set priorities, and of course, they make consequential decisions that have repercussions on their team and on the business. The limiting factor, and what Andy and the leadership at Amazon is poking at, is that the span of control, how many direct reports a manager can support, needs to be higher. My question is, what's that upper bound? Let's say today that the average manager has six people that reports into them. With the help of AI, could that number be larger? Of course it can. It can be 10, 20, or even 50. The reason that this ratio is the limiting factor is because managers need to keep tabs on what their reports are doing. They need to understand who is performing well and who isn't. But in the future, I think AI can help out with that. Imagine a world, and it may seem dystopian, I agree, where everything a worker does, every meeting, every website a person goes to on a company computer is recorded. Every Slack message is saved and sent over to the AI, and it analyzes whether you're doing a good job or not. Today's natural constraints on span of control are under attack, and that's going to lead to a manager's job, much like a fleet manager for a fleet of cars, to be phased out eventually. I see a future where organizations are really flat, and we're seeing signs of this today, like with Andy Jassy's letter to Amazon employees. The LinkedIn messages you will see in Q1 in 2025 for managers that were let go from Amazon are a harbinger of things to come, mark my words. So how should we respond to this? Well, I don't think that it's all doom and gloom. I think that we are still several years before AI replaces anybody's job. With all of the hype, I can't really think of any job that AI has completely decimated. Though, if you're a customer service representative, maybe the writing is on the wall, but I can't think of too many others, and definitely not software developers. I'm not an AI doomer. I'm squarely on the team of Yan LeCun, the chief AI scientist at Meta. His idea is that the role of AI is as an assistant to humans. Our AI assistants will talk to the assistants of others and they will make us better at whatever we do. 
We are a long way from artificial general intelligence. When and if that ever comes, I think no job is safe, but I don't think it's coming in my lifetime. Large language models are absolutely incredible and can do a lot of impressive things, but ultimately they leverage language. Reality is not language. Language is a human construct that we use to communicate with each other. When I record a video, there's a set of photons that come from my lighting, bounce off me, and hit the sensor of my camera. I can describe that interaction with language, but the underlying dynamics are not perfectly described with Portuguese or Mandarin or English. We've trained these models with the text that humans have created. That doesn't mean that we've captured reality and how it works inside of these models. We've simply captured our flawed descriptions of the universe. AI is going to have an amazing and incredible effect on our society, no doubt. I think that smaller companies are going to be able to go up against big companies with the help of AI. For big companies, I think that they'll employ more builders who themselves will use AI to become wildly productive and that organizational structures will become really flat. I think more and more people are going to start businesses on their own with the help of AI. I don't think, though, that if you're a young manager today, that you should target a career in middle management. You should be targeting going out on your own. Maybe you should pick up coding. If you found this video insightful, check out this video on whether or not junior developers are screwed in today's tough job market. I guarantee you, I make some points that you haven't thought of.